is time for us to work on cauliflower and herbs, but we gotta plan it out first. Hello everyone and welcome back to Kim's Cozy Corner. I'm Kim, as I always say, thank you for coming back to join me. Today we are going to work on starting more seeds. And today we're gonna to focus on herbs and cauliflower and that old celery that I seem to can't figure out how to grow just a little bit. Those are the things that we're gonna to plant today. Before we get into the planting process though, one of the things that I like to do is plan out my schedule. And there are a lot of different ways to plan out your schedule. You can look at each of the seed packs, figure out when you need to start those seeds and then start them accordingly. Some people like to use computers. Some people like to use a calendar. I like to use my garden journal. So my garden journal is a very, what I call timely book to help us figure out when we need to start our seeds and when we actually do it. In this journal, there's room for you to plan out your seeds. Let me read the back of this journal for you. It says, use this journal to document your plan for starting seeds your actual start date, as well as when you transplant them out into the garden. There are also note pages in here uh, for, cap for capturing your fertilizing schedule, as well as a reference table in here for your vegetables that'll help get you started. So this is actually my book. I actually created this book myself and I'm selling it on Amazon. So there will be a link below to this book on Amazon if you're interested in it. But let's open it up and let's talk about what's inside. This book starts with your average frost, last frost date, as well as your first frost date. Now, these are two very important things that you need to know to figure out when you need to start your seeds. And just behind that, I've created a vegetable reference page. And I know this is gonna be very difficult to see, but it's a vegetable reference page. And on this page, we talk about whether a vegetable is considered a cool season crop or a warm season crop. We also have kind of an average days to harvest once you transplant it out in your garden. So you can kind of get an idea of when you can expect to harvest. <clears throat> it also has in here whether your plants can take full sun, partial sun, or uh, somewhere in between. Now this reference guide is not a begin all, end all, it's just to help get you started. As I always say, follow the directions on your seed pack first. But if you just need that quick reference, you can start with that page. And then behind that page, <clears throat> is where we start documenting what we're doing. Now, I have an Excel spreadsheet on my computer I use as well, but when I'm in the heat of the moment, I just wanna get my hands dirty. I don't wanna get my hands dirty and touch my computer, right? We don't wanna do that. So in here, the very first page lets you list your vegetables, plan it out at first, right? So you can write down when you planned on starting your season and when you actually did, and then you can talk about when you put it in your garden. Behind that, I have a feeding schedule. So you can keep track of the last time you fertilized your plants, as well as when you need to do it again. Because once you get outside, I like to use a liquid fertilizer every 10 to 14 days. And y'all, I get off track. So I created this little chart here to help me keep on track. And then behind there, in my mind, this is the most important thing. When you're out in the garden and you're kind of looking at your plants and you're trying to see how they're doing, I have a garden note page here for that. And on this note page here, it talks about whether something germinated, if the fruit's doing well, 
if the plant height is good, if, are there disease issues? Is there, are there bug pressure issues? And then just room for notes. And when you're in the garden, you can take this little bitty book with you and you can kind of keep track of what's going on. And then you can come back and put it in your computer if that's what you would like to do. So my little garden journal book is for sale on Amazon. There is a link to this book below. Um, garden journal, seed starting and planting schedule is the name of my little book. And if you're interested, click on the link and it'll take you to the page in, on Amazon. But let's get planting. So I've already updated my garden journal with what I'm planning on planting today. And so today we are planting quite a few herbs and it says I should have planted them on the 31st of January. And today is the 2nd of February. So I'm pretty close to where I wanna be for the herbs. In addition to the herbs, we're gonna be planting some cauliflower and my cauliflower, I'm pretty much on track as well. And what else are we planting? Oh, celery. And celery, I'm pretty much on schedule now. But I have everything that I've planted so far, when I planted it and when I actually got it started. So let's jump into these additional cool season crops that we're going to start today. Now, I will start by sharing with you all of the seeds we're starting today with pictures. I like to share pictures of what I'm growing. Let's talk about this celery first. Celery is a cool season crop, but it does need eight to 12 weeks before the last frost date to get started. So we are going to start celery now, and this is the celery that we will be starting. And I wanted five last year and I got 50. So we are gonna to try to do better to get closer to like 10 or 15 plants, but we'll see. In addition to celery, let's talk about all the different herbs. Now I'm not starting all of my herbs now. Some of my herbs I will plant outside from seed in place. I don't need to start them early. And some of them, I do need to start them early, but I only need to start them four to six weeks from my last frost date. And my last frost date is the end of April. So we're definitely um, more than um, four weeks out for that. So these are the plants that need a little more time to get um, established before we plant them outside. So we will be doing sage, sweet marjoram, thyme, rosemary, chives, and that's it for my herbs. And I have some herbs that are coming back every year, but I am changing my garden plan up this year. So there will be a video talking about the changes coming to my garden. So I got to get new herb plants started, whether they're perennial or not. So we will make sure we get all of those started today. And then we are going to plant quite a bit of cauliflower. Now, I only had one type of cauliflower because one of my seed packs got mixed up. But I couldn't help myself, y'all, and I went online and I bought some more cauliflower. Now, all of these seeds I'm about to show you, I don't have pictures, so I'll put the pictures up here in the corner. But I went online to Burpees and I picked up a white Corona, white Corona. Now, here's the picture of that right here. But here's the interesting thing about this one. When I was on Burpees website, I got really excited about this cauliflower because it's the one, well, it's this one of the fastest growing cauliflowers that they've seen. It says that you can harvest in 30 days after transplanting, 30, only 30 days. And so I gotta see this for myself. So white Corona cauliflower, we're gonna do an early white hybrid in cauliflower from Burpees as well. Now this one is a 52 day harvest. And um, it also, the head gets up to about nine inches across. Um, a closed jacket leaves, so they get a lot of protection, uh, protecting that head of cauliflower. I'm also going to do snowball. And I just picked these up online. Um, I don't know anything about this particular 
um, vendor. But here's a picture of the Snowball Y Improved, which means it's a hybrid. And then from Johnny's, we're going to do Flame Star F1. So it's a first generation hybrid, Flame Star. And here's a picture of it. So you can see it's kind of a yellowish, orangish color. I grew it last year and it did really, really well in my garden. And it's a 62 day to harvest. So if you can look, if, if you think about what I'm telling you here, this cauliflower is going to start coming in at 30 days. And then um, the longest time is 62 days. This other one doesn't say. But you'll be able to see that we're going to be kind of staggering that harvest throughout the season. So we'll be harvesting cauliflower for hopefully if the weather doesn't get too warm too fast over the course of a month or two. And the last thing, so y'all, when I was online, I was trying to get my Korean radish and which I did get, by the way, my Korean daikon radish, which is a, a, a little different variety. It's a little bigger variety. We'll get to that later. But while I was there, y'all, I saw some Korean Napa cabbage and I don't remember the name of it. It's in Korean. Here's a picture of it. But it's going to be good. We will make some kimchi out of it. I've been kind of spoiled. My daughter lived in Korea for five years and I got to visit quite often and I love me some Korean food. And so I'm trying to get some Korean varieties while I'm at it. But that's all we're starting today. Those are the seeds. And if this is the first time you've ever come to Kim's Cozy Corner with me, I like to take my time and explain how to do these processes. So I like to start my seeds in a seed starting mix. I am using Jiffy. The top has been cut open here. It's a Jiffy all natural seed starting mix. Now what I do first thing with this seed starting mix, I put it in a container and I pour boiling water over my seed starting mix. A lot of people have been asking me, how do I deal with those fungus gnats? Well, I kill all the eggs before they ever think about hatching in my house in my seed starting mix. So I put boiling hot water over that seed starting mix and I make sure I mix it in real good to kill any kind of seeds that might be hibernating in my seed starting mix. And then I let it cool completely, right? You don't want to burn your seeds, let it cool completely. And then I use my seed starting mix. For the things that I bring in from outdoors into my indoor growth space that's behind me here, because I, I keep getting questions on how do I deal with the fungus gnats and other uh, pests that I really don't want in my house. Now, I haven't had any really big issues. I use a fungus gnat sticky tape, which I'll have a description in the link below. And I just stick that right in my pockets of my green stalks or containers. And so if there's something in the soil waiting to hatch, as soon as it hatch and it decides to come out, it's stuck on my sticky tape. Um, I hear some people are using neem oil and in the green stalk issue two magazine, they actually talk about how to deal with fungus gnats. So if you're interested in the green stalk magazine, um, there'll be a link below to the green stalk website and you can pick up one of their magazines. So this is issue two of their magazine. And um, there's a lot of stuff in this magazine. There are tips in here, there are recipes. They talk about what's coming from a green stalk standpoint. They have different gardeners and their tips and how they grow. And I just happen to be one of the gardeners in this book. Now, I'm not going to show this in every one of my videos, but y'all, I'm very excited about being in the green stock book. Um, but as I was reading the magazine, there was. I got to find it now. There is an actual article in this green stock magazine that talks about pest control and how can you get rid of certain things. So let me go to the fungus gnats. There it is. How can I get rid of fungus gnats? Um, they talk, well, they talk about fungus gnats, ants and beetles and 
I think stink bugs and ladybugs, but you don't want to get rid of ladybugs. Um, there's a lot of different insects they talk about, but fungus gnats are in here. And they said there's an organic product called mosquito bites that you can find at garden centers and other places. Mosquito bites that you can use with, to help against fungus gnats. I've never tried it, but it's a tip in the Green Stock magazine. Now, we've talked about insects. We've talked about what type of seed starting mix I use. And now the next thing we need to talk about is labeling. Before you start trying to start seeds, please label your containers because all of these seeds look alike, especially in the brassica family. And you wanna make sure you know what you're growing before it becomes a full plant. So I've already done that for all of the seeds that we just talked about. I have my little labels in here. I like to work inside this bin here. And this is some type of seed starting tray. I'll have a link also in the description below. I didn't buy this. My neighbor gave it to me since I took over his garden and I've always used it to start my seeds. Now we're gonna start these seeds and you don't really need to see my face for that. So we will get started with starting these seeds. So I'm gonna turn the tray around so I can see it. Now, when I'm filling each one of my little trays up, I like to put my seed starting mix in and it needs to be damp, not soaking wet, but nice and damp. I put it in, I kind of poke it down just a little bit and then I lightly cover it up again so the soil on the top has a little room in it. And um, that's how I fill each of the containers up. And then I won't show you each and every one of these, but I'm kind of give you an idea of how to start each of your cells. The first thing that we need to do is open this packet here and then open the packet inside the packet. All right, so these are non-GMO cauliflower packaged for the 23-24 season. And this is Snowball Y, which is right here. If you have room, you can put your seeds in larger containers so you don't have to up pot. I need to start a lot of seeds, so I like to start in small containers till I see how they germinate. And when they get large enough, I will move them into a larger container. Um, so I'm gonna start in small containers, but you don't have to start this small. So I like to put two to three seeds in each pocket. And let's see how good I can do that. So I have two pockets set aside. Look at that, I did that all right today. So I got my two to three seeds in there and then follow the directions on your seed pack. My seed pack says that these seeds need to be a half inch deep. And this little tool I have right here, I have two of them. And everybody's always asking questions. So I, if, I've, if you've heard me say this, I apologize, but there are some people who are coming for the first time. I just picked these up on Amazon. They came with something else that I purchased but you don't need this. You can use a chopstick. You can use a pencil or pen. You can use your finger. You don't have to have these tools. But this particular tool has numbers on the side, not that I use them for anything, but it has measurements on the side so I can tell what a half inch, a quarter inch, and you know, all of those kind of things. But boy, I can't see that. It's on there, but I don't use it. But we need to go a half inch deep. So we're gonna just push these down a half inch. Now, once I get my seeds in, I like to lightly press them down just to kind of hold them in place. And that's the process. My Snowball Y Improved Cauliflower are in. And I'm gonna do the exact same process with each and every one of these. And so I'm just gonna to get to it and I will bring you back when I get done.
So I'm getting ready to start these celery seeds. And y'all, they are so small. I can see why I ended up with 50 versus five. Y'all, I'm gonna end up with 50 celery seeds again. I mean, 50 celery plants again. Um, they are just too tiny for me to handle. I thought there was trash on the side of the pack, but that's not trash. Those are seeds. Oh my goodness. I see how I messed up now. Um, ah, we're going to mess up, y'all. I know we're going to mess up. I had six cells prepared for the celery, and I'm probably putting 10 plants in each cell because the seeds are just that small. But maybe since these seeds are a year old, I won't have such great germination this time. <laughs> okay, so celery seeds are in. We are going for 10 plants, and I believe we're going to get 50 again if the germination is as great as it was last time. Ooh, this is a lot of celery for somebody like me who don't like celery. I cook with celery. Don't get me wrong. I cook with it. I just don't like it for fresh eating. And of the three families that we're growing for this year, in addition to mine, so a total of four families, only one of the four families like it for fresh eating. So, whoo, we don't have a lot of celery. Well, they can freeze it this year. I don't need to freeze anymore. Not with my five year supply. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, there's the celery, all 500 seeds of them. All right, let's keep going. Y'all, time's not much better. These seeds are so small. Whew, let me turn this around. I'm going to have time growing in each and every one of these pockets. I can't even explain just how small these seeds are. But if I get enough time, I can always sell it at the garage sale. So that's always an option. I normally don't sell the herb seeds, but it's always an option. Y'all, all of these herbs are small. I just didn't know any better. Whew. I just don't remember how small these seeds can be. Okay. All of the seeds are in their containers. My soil is already nice and damp, but I will quickly talk to you about how to water. You always water your seeds from the bottom. And... When your, when your soil is nice and moist, it's really, really dark brown like this, almost black. Now, when your soil starts to dry out, it's a light brown color and the container gets very, very light. And that's how you know you need to water. But you always water from the bottom. And I don't need to water, but I'm just going to put just a little bit in the bottom to show you. But you just put a little bit in the bottom, just a very little. Now, I'm not putting that much because I am fully saturated, but you put the water in the bottom. I don't know, you know, yay high or so. And the, the soil will soak that water up from the bottom. And if it soaks it all up and it's dry and you need to add a little bit more, add a little bit more. But you don't want them sitting in water. Once it will not absorb any more water, you need to pour that water off of your young seedlings or you'll just kind of rot them out from the bottom. So water from the bottom, these are ready to go. Let's move them to the indoor grow space. Okay, we are in the indoor grow space. Here's my container. And this is in a solid 10-10 tray from Bootstrap Farmer. I'm not an affiliate or anything, but their trays are so nice. They hold up and easily could be reused for many, many years. So I'm in a 10-10 tray. 10-20 is twice the size. This is um, half the size. So it's a 10-10. And we're going to put these underneath one of my grow lights. Now, my grow light is just a typical shop light. So th there's, there's just regular shop bubs in here. Uh, they're not grow bubs. And that's what I use for my young seedlings. Now for everything else I got growing in here, I do use grow lights for things that I'm trying to harvest to eat now. So I got them in here 
I got my light nice and low, just barely over the tops of my plants. And this is where I will leave them. And once these seedlings germinate, I will start slowly moving the light up as the plants grow. I try to keep my lights as close to the plants as possible because these are not grow lights. So they're gonna need anything and everything that this light can give it. Now I try to get a 5,000K bulb or 7,000K bulb or 10,000 or whatever it is, but the highest K bulb you can get. And I think I have some 10,000 or 5,000s or 7,000s. I don't know. I bought them a couple years ago and they're just here. <laughs> but shop lights down low, ceilings are ready to go. And within a couple of weeks, y'all, they're gonna poke their little heads out and letting me know who's here for the party and who stayed home. If you're interested in having your own little journal like this to help you keep things straight, because if you're like me, you can't remember it all. I will have a link in the description below to Amazon um, if you want to pick up one of my little journals. So we have the next batch started. It's right behind us. So now we have broccoli, we have cabbage, we have cauliflower, we have herbs, we have onions, and three peppers growing. They're getting ready. We are getting ready to go outside. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share. If you know other people out there would enjoy what I'm doing, please share my videos. Until next time, and I hope there will be a next time you come to Kim's Cozy Corner. Bye.